you've got to be worried about Jade Druid as well, which is something that can just absolutely obliterate the, the control meta. The funny thing is about this lineup from Duncan is, depending on the archetypes, you could see a completely different set of tactics for him. If this is aggro, Druid, and Pirate Warrior, you have a very aggro-centered matchup. It could be the aggro mage, you know, with the ice blocks and full burn. It could be that Discover mage. It could be Freeze mage. Or if it's Jade Druid and, and Taunt Warrior, suddenly you've got a control-based lineup here. So depending on the archetypes from Duncan, we could see two very different sets of tactics. And you touched on it briefly in your predictions, actually. You said that Duncan, you think, is one of the most skilled players in the Premiership in certain in terms of like mechanical skill and just how well he plays. I mean, some people would argue mechanical skill in Hearthstone, what? But it is there. Like he he can take turns, he can do it quickly before it ropes out. He knows exactly <laughs> how he wants to play the game. I mean, you laugh, but you know what I mean. Like, I know what you mean. I, he I just, knows how the I, game works. Coming from a MOBA background, when you say mechanical yeah, scale, well, it's like, yeah. oh, he has selected the right card. And he, he can drag it. his mouse from right <laughs> to left successfully. Oh, look at the pinpoint precision of using that card on deck. Oh, he has just landed that card right in the right position. And the Defender of Argus has been used on two minions and not just one. What mechanical skill from Duncan? I mean, board positioning is a, a very important factor, but... Duncan is just a very good Hearthstone player, uh, without a doubt. But he's going against someone who is also a very good Hearthstone player. And to be honest, everyone in the Premiership is, really. I wouldn't say that we have any bad players in the Premiership. There's no one that d there isn't anyone that doesn't deserve to be here. Do um, I know that ball control guy? Yeah, well, he's already out, so we don't have to worry about him. I'm joking. Uh, I love ball control. So it is the Murloc Paladin for Hello Leroy. And I saw the Primordial Drake and the Stonehill Defender in there, so this is a little bit different to Ness's lineup, more mid-range, late-game orientated. This is one of the variants of Murloc Paladin that we have seen have success on ladder. And it's a good start for Helen Uroi. He's got the one drop into the two drop, which also means that he has a viable three drop as well with a hero power and a secret. So he's got the start that he would have wanted. Now, this is interesting from Duncan. He has got at least the Trailblazer. Uh, and so this looks maybe... Is, it, is this more of the Discover Mage? Yeah, this this looks like Discover Mage as well, with the least yeah. being included in. It's been there are like two slots that have kind of been dipped in and out. Of course, Volcano is an option. Uh, not Volcano, sorry, but uh, we've also got the Gluttonous Ooze, which is an option that has been kind of included and removed as well. Mm -hmm. It's Meteor, is what I meant, rather than the Volcano has been here, or there, and everywhere. They're all fire. Ed, there's just lots of fire. There's just lots of fire. One one drop fire minions and many fire spells. An but uh, the the Discover Mage is just shown how dominant it's been really in the last couple of weeks and everyone started playing it and yes people have tried this secret variant uh, like a, an aggressive secret mage as well we've seen and mm -hmm. some have just come to the conclusion that in the middle of the two seems to be somewhat better yeah but it, it depends what you're comfortable with and depends on your play style entirely mm. to be honest and the gluttonous ooze will get value in this game type in this game type? In this game. Wow. Well, there's two true silvers. There is Tyrion. You're going to get some value off this gluttonous news at some point. The coin out of the Archaeologist is interesting, which makes me think that he's either thinking about pinging and attacking next turn or using that Frostbolt. Now he's looking for a secret. What is so Eye for an Eye is uh, it's good. very popular yeah. choice in this matchup you because have to, you it's have a way of getting through ice blocks. Yeah, you have to get the mage to one health though. As, mm -hmm. we, as we talked about last week, we were kind of talking about the decisions behind Eye for an Eye. Ball Control did contact me and say, kind of have to get him to one health, dude. So it's kind of there to prevent the ping. And actually, he's going to take it early on. Has no real need for the Noble Sacrifice, even though it would have helped deal with this 2-3 on board. No getaway Kodo, so he takes the Eye for the Eye. Playing the long game here is Hello Leroy, really playing for that potential win condition. Yeah, it may have... Uh his decision may have been slightly different if he was running the aggressive variant, for example. He might have just said, actually, I want something that's just going to get me the board now, and I don't need to worry about eye for an eye because I can just pop two blocks and win the game. But it is the more control variant. He is probably going to be running the Stonehill Defenders, as you said. He's going to be looking for those taunts to try and get some board control and, and try and just burst down this mage later on and hope that eye for an eye can come in handy mm -hmm. a little bit later, as you said. Well, if he holds on to it the entire game, Duncan is absolutely going to know that's I for an eye. Oh, yeah. Of so, uh, the only other thing it could be is Getaway Kodo for some insane value with like a Tyrion or something. Yep. But, uh, you know, holding on to a secret against them in the mage matchup as a paladin does give you an indication that it's probably that particular. Now, if you are watching and you're thinking, why on earth does Hello Leroy talk to himself so much? Is he just showing off in front of camera? Actually, he's not. I've watched him play at tournaments when he's not on camera. 
and he just says everything out loud. Mm -hmm. It's one of the ways that he uh, clearly, clearly helps himself think by just saying out loud. They say you, you're a better driver if you say everything out loud that you see. It helps you concentrate. Uh, so he's putting it into effect with Hearthstone whilst he's piloting. Absolutely. Hello Leroy has a couple of options in hand. Realistically, you'd think that Aldor Peacekeeper helps him maintain his board, but does he want to save that for a bigger target down the line? The other option would be to Hero Power. You don't really want to play Eye for an Eye right now. Neither is this board worth a quality you would expect. So those would be the two options for Hello Leroy to consider. Looks like he's just going to try and maintain tempo by getting something on board and maintaining a 1-1, either forcing Duncan to ping or making it awkward and potentially giving him a favorable trade in the future. Haven't seen the Mana Worms from Duncan. No early start that's been able to really overrun the uh, the early board from Hello Leroy. Look at all this. The Gluttonous Oozes will have, you'd think, too much value later on to, mm. to use now just for a little bit of board presence. Nothing good in Hello Leroy's hand right now. Yeah, that's for sure. So maybe he's oh. just, is he just showing off his, right. his mouse wire? Nice mouse cable. There we go. Thanks, Hello Leroy. We got there in the end. That's okay. This is a, an awkward mm. turn. You'd, you'd feel like it's only Hero Power and Pass that's available for Hello Leroy. So it's turns like this where you know what the turn is going to be. So you use your time to think about what's going to happen the exactly, next turn. Exactly, yeah. What's going to happen three turns later. Have a look what Duncan's considering. Again, Duncan has had all the time in the world to generate card draw. He's got plenty of options in hand. Loads of burn as well. Double Frostbolt, Fireball, Firelands, Portal 2. Could set up for a good Volcanic Potion by pinging this turn. Or just use the Volcanic Potion now and then ping and Secret next turn or ping and Frostbolt. Could just Frostbolt the 3-3 three, three and ping off. All of these are good options for Duncan. Yeah, he does have a a few lines of play that all seem relatively similar, do the same thing. You go on the defensive, and just play a secret if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Doesn't feel like enough's getting done in that situation, though. I guess a Frostbolt plus a ping is fine here. Yeah, it deals with most of the board. You can save your Volcanic Potion for something a little bit more interesting. And for Leroy, he may just have to play this Kodo, unless he draws something here. He might want to just keep some board presence. Harrison Jones, I guess. Well, there you go. That's a 5-4 you can plonk on the board. Or do you keep it because of Medivh? Yeah. This this le this deck list from Duncan looks like he could be running Medivh. Yeah. I mean, the Discover Mage typically does top out. It has Medivh there. It has Alex Alexstrasza at the top as well. Mm -hmm. I think playing it is the correct decision because you might want to oh, stay... He just said it. He just said it as he played it. He played it and said, oh, there's Medivh. Yeah. And you can see his head in his hands. But... How many? I mean, you had the option of stampeding Coda or a five-four, so I think that was a difficult turn for Hello Leroy to consider. Medivh obviously is a big deal. It is, and is possibly a game-winning uh, minion, but you've got to draw it and you've got to get there first. If Hello Leroy can overwhelm this board enough, then it might not come into play. It might not see the value. You've got to, you've got, you've got weighing up here. You know, you're either going to get value out of. Harrison, are you going to get value out of Stampede and Kodo? Which for you is better? Harrison value means you're a little bit more viable in the late game. You do have a quality Consecrate, remember, as well, so you can kind of bait that out. Yep. Stampede and Kodo will allow you to get some value out of dealing with a smaller minion such as this. These are the options now. You'd feel like Silence would be great for something like Tyrion. Yep. So that's where he's gone. Yeah, the Silence is a very... Good pickup, to be honest. I don't think. Do you need? I don't think you need to frostbolt on uh, this Harrison here. I don't think you're immediately worried, but Duncan clearly doesn't want to let this get out of control. He doesn't want to allow Hello Leroy to burst him down too much. Stamping in Kodo can now get some value, mm -hmm. so he's not going to feel too bad about playing it. You'd think that he wants to save it for something like a Doomsayer, perhaps, but when you've got enough on the board, maybe you don't need to right now. If Doomsay is being run, of course. Let you can never take that guarantee. Think. You get the impression this is not a full Freeze Mage variant here, so... Nope. You know, I think uh, I think if you go through your head about what minions you're going to get value from Stampeding Kodo from, and look at what potential deck list Duncan is running, you'd probably say that Stampeding Kodo is going to get its maximum value oh, off wonder. a minion like this. And you can just shove the Valve and Inquisitor down as well, make it kind of awkward for Duncan next turn. Because Duncan's got a great Volcanic Potion as it stands. 
doesn't even need to Volcanic Potion, it can just ping and trade as well, so. I think you could, I think this is the best value you might get out of Stampede and Cody. The There's not many other minions to mind that I think you'd get major value at this point in time, and uh, it's not even going to play Valve and Inquisitor, because obviously there is the synergy with Valve and Inquisitor, where you can hero power, Valve in hero power, which might not seem like much, but it can make all the difference at some times. Nine cards at the moment for Duncan, so he's going to refill to ten with his Arcane Intellect. And just continue to grow this huge hand. There's the Meteor. That'll be huge for Ragnaros the Light Lord. Will Heliore position? He looks like he has positioned around Meteor, by yeah. the way, kind of. I mean, you should. Most players will nowadays. We've even seen casting lineups position themselves for Meteor as well. There's the true silver. This could be a val this could be a hero power valve in Inquisitor hero power turn. That also makes it again meteor proof to an extent. It's not a great hand for Heli Leroy though. He's not really generating huge amounts of threat. And you don't really want a true silver and smack face because it feels kind of bad. Think. If he does true silver, is he baiting out the ooze from Duncan, or does Duncan save it for a possible Tyrion weapon later? That's if Tyrion even gets the weapon because the silence in hand might stop that from happening. The Silence could also get a lot of value from um, the Spike Witch Steed. If that comes down later on, that could be a massive punish. Not allowing anyone to get any value from that. But actually, he has gone for the, the double hero power, as you said, just to keep a little bit of board presence. It's not too threatening, but it's enough that Duncan has to at least consider ways to deal with it. Polymorph is good as well. I mean, he's basically throwing out every answer possible for these big threats that Hela Leroy has. Could play Mirror Entity as well. Imagine playing Mirror Entity on this turn and then getting a massive 8 drop. Leroy would have to expect it though, given that it came from Primordial Glyph, so you, you'd have to have that in your mind. It's definitely worth considering. Mm. I mean, you could be looking at a Tyrion and a possible Ragnaros. Exactly. The other option is that you just pick something and then play Elise the Trailblazer to get a 5-5 on board. I like Mirror Entity. I, I really like Mirror Entity. Cause but I mean, I like it because I've got Cast Vision, I guess. But I yeah. mean, even if I didn't, I'd be thinking, okay, it's turn eight. I'd be, I'd be thinking about Tyrion more than Ragnaros, to be honest. I'd be thinking about anything from Paladin on turn eight. But turn eight is the Paladin power turn. And also just playing a secret against Paladin is scary because a counter spell can really screw you over. Mm. A spellbender can just destroy you as well. If they play Spike Ridge Deed and you've got a, a spellbender, like that's just, it can be game over. Spellbender OP, my friend. Isn't going to play the Mirror Entity, though. I no. picked it up. Decided against it. So now Ragnaros could come down. You could also play Rockpool Hunter, but depends what you think. is. Uh, he's going to test right now. There's the Ice Barrier. I mean, you don't play the Ragnaros, right? In no world do you play it, because you're going to save that to heal yourself back up in case Alex Straza comes Alex down Straza, later. Yeah. God, this is really tough for Heli Leroy. He's kind of just having to play the long game. I think you're right. I completely agree with you, Dan. I think you're in a situation where actually you save Ragnaros for post Alex Straza turn because you don't know where the win conditions for Duncan are right now. You've seen du double Frostbolt come out, so you, you're kind of aware that some of the burn has gone. But you still have to be aware that this this mage deck does kind of play like a... Oh, that's going to get punished. Yeah, you lose. You use and then you could do multiple things, right? You could fireball something off. You could at least the Trailblazer to get mana value. At least now your Tyrion feels fairly safe. I though. wonder if Leroy is running uh, Gentle Megasaurs. Probably not. But it's something that Duncan will certainly have to be uh, I think considering. He's, I think he's, at this point, probably considering War Leader more than... Megasaur. I don't think Hello Hero would run Megasaur. Spike Ridge Deed is big, though. It is, but as, as I said earlier, that silence yes. is really going to get... That's where it's going to get its value. The silence will get its value there, but also getting rid of the silence means that Tyrion gets a little bit safer. Yes. Yes, it does. I guess what are you more scared of? Uh, a 3-7 and then a 2-6? Or just three charges of five? It could possibly jam to your face. I think silence is too tempting here. Mm, you could silence, you could ping and violence portal this turn. Yeah, Duncan needs to start building a board, really. Mm. He can see that Hello Leroy hasn't been able to put much threats down. 
So I get to ping Firelands Portal onto the Kodo or onto the Inquisitor. Inquisitor may be better if you are worried about, uh, as you said, War Leader or any Murloc synergy. This is pretty solid. Not a bad draw from the uh, Firelands Portal either. And Dan can take extreme value trades here too. Suddenly there are no more Mur Murlocs left on board. Remember, there is always the major backup plan of Equality Consecration for Hello Leroy. So he always has that absolute out if he needs it. So Hero Power into Sunky Pitarum seems like really your only okay play. Yeah. But I, it's not that good either. It's not amazing, actually. I completely agree. I mean, you, you leave them with a 3-3 and you've got a 3-7 on board, I guess. It could be worse. You're still getting value out of it but it's not the insane value that you might be able to get. But I guess with the amount of removal that this uh, this mage has, will you ever get any real value out of it? I, li I like the hero power, so keep it tarot. It gets through this Ali Armor Smith straight away. Meteor could come into play here now, though. And there's the mirror entity as well. Hadn't actually realized that he had played that one. I thought that was still the ice, sir. Uh, Nice Barry. So now a nice three seven. I mean, Helio didn't Duncan. have a choice to play around. No, it, he though. didn't. Yeah. And no. I mean, he would have just presumed it was probably an ice block. Depends how much he was he was uh, tracking it, really. <laughs> oh God, feels bad when you pay two mana for a two mana spell <laughs> with Primordial. <laughs> As you said, Meteor gets a lot of value here. And suddenly there's a three seven on board now for Duncan. However, Leroy is getting through some of these annoyances, like the Mirror Entity, like the Silence. These have, are now being dealt with, and now Tyrion, there's no Ooze, there's no Silence. We didn't see him pull a, pull a poly Polymorph, so... But it's also a board that is going to continuously do six damage. Yeah. Plus, you know there is a lot of burn in the Discover Mage. Mm. Well, we definitely know, but Leroy will know it's a possibility, so... It it, are we looking at a potential equality consecra consecration play? And this could be, yeah. Feels awful, but you might have to here, because otherwise you shouldn't be taking too much damage and allowing yourself just to be chipped away by this mage. I think that is the play, unfortunately. And we know that Duncan could have won in two turns with the Fireless Portal, the, the uh, Fireball, the Pyroblast. It was a two-turn win. There is a Polymorph in deck for Duncan, so now even if Tyrion does come down, he has that potential answer as well too much value in this mage deck i think for leroy you needed to get off to a start and leroy is obviously very irate as he always is when he is losing if you can't oh he does run gentle megasaur i apologize oh. yeah the megasaur is there so duncan is was playing well around the murlocs not allowing any uh any real value to come through Too, I think there's just wow. too much value in Duncan's deck for Leroy to contend with. Are you tempted to polymorph this Ragnaros? I don't think you necessarily need to, given the answers that you have in hand. I guess, yeah, you can just Firelands Portal, Flame Gears there, and then pin. Exactly. I know you can get a 5-6 on board for that. That's a great... That's one of the better draws you can get. You can even play a little Flame Elemental if you want to. Duncan could be thinking of trading. And I think he will just because of Gentle Megasaur. So this does tell us that he is playing around Gentle Megasaur. The only reason you trade there is for a Gentle Megasaur poisonous. And that's really not what he wants to see. So Lay on Hands is not a bad draw, but he's obviously not going to get the heal value out of it, which would be ideal for him. This could be just a Murloc, War Leader, Gentle Megasaur play, and then eventually Lay on Hands next turn to regenerate some of the hand. This is really playing into the hands mm. of Duncan. I mean, just looking at the body language from Hello Leroy, he's not happy. He is, I mean, I'll say it, he's tilted. When and is, when, when is you he... go into a game two already with a bad mindset, sometimes it just seems like the game is against you and you can make silly decisions because of it. I've seen it happen plenty of times what? on my own ladder experience. And also, I mean, when is he we a... know Leroy. When he, is he not tilted? He gets tilted very <laughs> easily. Uh, it's probably his his Ma worst uh, his weakness. Yeah. It is his major weakness, and I think that's something that he needs to to sort of manage in his own way. Yeah. 
he needs to be able to calm down after the cards don't go his way, reset and think about how he can approach the situation. You'd think you'd be looking for Divine Shield, Poisonous. Yeah, those are those are pretty solid draws from the Gentle Megasaur here. I mean, the thought process perhaps from Hello Leroy is maybe he's brought a list that really targets the Discover Mage and he mm. feels like he should be winning this game. And if he loses and the Discover Mage is suddenly out of the picture, he may think he's unfavored in the rest of the matchups. Of course, a frustrating thing, but you, you're right. You just need to sometimes accept things aren't going your do? way and look what past it. Do? What is it? What does Duncan do now? Because he's got 22 damage in hand. So technically, in his mind, he's got more than 22 damage. He's got 25 damage in hand. So in his mind, he could go face and try and win this over two turns. And even even through, I he's got 20. Back. Yeah, even potentially through the lay on hands, he might actually come out on top. So what is he worried about by not trading? I mean, is it is it an unnecessary risk? Do you need to? get aggressive you can just trade and get rid of this board and just shut out and close this game how punished are you by another equality consecrate if he literally runs two though i don't think you're too worried just because you know what's left and you, you know how much value you've got that's very true that's very true he could do this over two turns regardless with this board as well so there was the two options for him he chose to take the safer route So you can lay on hands back up to 27 mm. if you wanted. I think this this play here stops the board being able to go through him directly without Duncan again finding some form of answer. We can see there is a polymorph in hand though. And now Duncan probably thinks about going face. If he polymorphs, could then fireball and then go face. And I think he wins with Pyroblast even through lay on hands. Yeah, the polymorph is an easy decision. I don't think you need to fireball this turn. Oh, okay, yeah, that's true. You you you're happy to leave the sheep up, but you kill off the Murloc just again in case there's another Megasaur with poison. Leroy furious. He's so furious. Yeah, you win with Pyroblast next turn if Leroy doesn't. There's the there's the next equality. Yep. So here comes the low on the hands. Not gonna save you though. And there's a second consecration as well that you said you were searching for a little bit earlier. So Good. now it's damage control. You equality, perhaps take uh, down one of the five attacks. Yeah, I think that's the I think that's the damage control now. But even then, you are dead, unfortunately. Uh, With pyroblast, Manawan goes up to two as well. Yes, Manawan goes up to two. Yeah, that's mm. what I was thinking about. I was I was trying to figure out where the extra one You're damage like, came from. Sixteen down. Why are you yeah, like crazy little <laughs> ginger? <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's true. He's dead either way. And even uh, a crazy eye for an eye play isn't going to save you either. Because Duncan will ping face and then... Well, I mean, he, he, he can take 10 oh, yeah. damage. Sure, true. He can take damage. That's true. There, there we, go. we have it. Duncan will take game one. Leroy probably needs to calm down a little bit. Just accept it. One of those games. Brush it off. Move on. Otherwise this could turn into a very nasty series, to be honest, because if he ca if he continues to just beat himself up, gets a little bit frustrated, that is when the misplays happen. I'm sorry, I don't want to like touch on it too much and be like, oh, storyline, Leroy's, but it's true. Like, you need to worry about these things. You need to really just blow it off. Are you all right? You're moving a bottle again, weren't you? To be fair, I didn't even notice, so you did well. You I, just yeah, did just, uh, just uh, no one notices me doing this. I think... Um, this is, this is, look, it's worth touching on. This has been, in all of the caster's opinion, Hello Leroy's major weakness. He he visibly and emotionally sometimes can't handle the pressure. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and it happens at live finals. It happens at home. I, I, I hate to think what he's like when he plays on ladder. He really struggles in the, in the tense situations to deal with bad luck. Because Hearthstone, in, in essence, has elements of that in it. You know, sometimes it depends on what you draw. Oh, yeah. You can, I mean, you can play all you want around sort of planning your turns but if you don't get the cards needed to plan and the opponent does that just that's just how card games work yeah the game can go against you you can get unfortunate you can get lucky i don't think anyone would debate that exactly uh, but rng is a factor let's let's give credit to duncan there played around everything had a super value orientated mage deck as well with the lease in there had the primordial glyphs obviously as pretty much
mage deck includes those. He played it super slow. He dealt with all the threats, dealt with Gentle Megasaur, which I wasn't even sure would be in Hillelioi's deck, but it was. So he was always, always assessing the threats that Hillelioi could put down and played it very well. Didn't even allow Hillelioi to get tempo off that Aldor Peacekeeper turn. Even though he had the multiple answers, got rid of that straight away with the Frostbolt, maintained the board to a minimum for Hillelioi, and then just through pure value, really outshone. And Hillelioi didn't really pull the threats that he would have wanted to later in the game. You know, you were looking for a board to build up with your Murloc War, with War Leader. You were looking for your Tyrion, and Duncan had answer after answer after answer. You know what? I was kind of hoping that we were going to have to fill for longer, because I was I was really hoping that Leroy was going to take a toilet break or something there. Mm. I think he may have needed it, but we'll see. If he can calm himself down, maybe if cards start to go his way, cheers himself up. That might be the way back in this series. It's a battle with himself as well as against the game now. It, it really is with Hello anyway. That's that is the major the major thing for him. It, it is a battle for himself. But on the other side, Duncan, calm and collected. I don't think that he would even be worried if he lost a game here. He's no. just like, well, yeah. Duncan never gets tilted. This is this is like polar opposites of Hearthstone players. I very I mean I don't know Duncan super well, but from from visible assessment of Duncan's play, he kind of shrugs it off every time. Shrugs it off. Doesn't doesn't visibly show any kind of wild emotion whatsoever. You can see this is Jade Druid for uh, Duncan, by the way. So we got the wrong end of the stick. Duncan has brought a control heavy lineup here. Halo Leroy has got a sort of coin two drop into coin two drop, which is probably going to be his play if he doesn't pick up anything else. And Duncan has got the vital ingredients of a Druid deck with Wild Growth and Innovate. I mean, they say that Jay Druid is the control killer. This is a control Murloc Paladin. Harrison Jones, not going to get its value uh, in this matchup, that's for sure. And as you quite rightly said, he will coin out that rock pool hunter. You know, should get the value off that as well, because just the Wild Growth for Duncan. Getting that ramp really important, of course, just to start generating those Jades. Burden oh. scales we saw being mulliganed his way, mulliganed away as well. A really vital ingredient to this uh, this Jade Druid deck, which hasn't really changed much since Unguro. I think Earthen scales is the only inclusion from Unguro. Yeah, you kind of lost the Raven Idols, right, and then yeah. the, pulled the Earthen scales in. Now the question for Duncan is, how greedy does he want to get? He could Feral Rage. He could also innovate out Aya Blackpool, which I actually think is a really solid play because it deals with a lot of things on board. Um, he had mo loads of options, though. It looks like it is going to be the Innovate Aya Blackpaw. So lots of ramp. I mean, when you're facing up against the Druid and you see Wild Growth turn two, you're already frustrated. But the fact he's just played um, Aya on pretty much, what, turn three, mm -hmm. in theory? That's not a pretty sight. You can deal with it for Hellily Roy, but you basically sacrifice your entire board at this point in time. Let me think. Just something you really don't want to be doing. You want to be able to slightly run away with these Murlocs. Mm -hmm. Really get the value out of them. Hope a war leader comes down and you can just chip away at this druid before they are able to gain an incredible amount of armor and those jades become too scary. But the only option for a play for Hellily Roy is either a quality, which just seems downright stupid, We'll just hero power here. I think it has to be hero power. Now the question is, do you take a big value trade? Or do you actually trade into this Aya? Looks like it's value trade. I think the skill's not going to help out just yet, but more ramp for Duncan is available. Mm -hmm. And Duncan can now take an even further value trade. He can trade the 5-3 into the 5-2 and then hero power the 1-1. One, one. Into the 2 uh, Yeah, into the 2-2. Two, two. Uh... You yeah, said 5-2. The 5-3 into the... Five, three, yeah, I, I just got number confused, my friend. Um, yeah, I think you take the value trade again. Well, if it, it punishes Leroy for his own value trade. This could be just a game of value trades, by the way, because Leroy could then trade the 3-4 into the opposing 2-2, two, two, and <laughs> suddenly it all just becomes very messy, but... A messy game that I think Duncan will be more than happy to take, to be mm. honest. You could also trade into the 5-3. I mean, it depends on how, if you want to stop these value trades eventually happening. What? And that's what Duncan's considering. Yeah, okay, he's saying, all right, I'm done with value trades. So Leroy, to win this game, those qualities, the Consecrates, they need to come down when there is a, a big threatening board and he's able to put threats of his own on following it mm. and be able to push damage to the face. 
it's a very difficult matchup, to be honest. Any control oriented deck, oriented, orientated? Is that right? Am I just going orientated. completely delusional oh, here? Right. I, say, that I, my I, accent? I say orientated, but I might just say it wrong, to be honest. Okay. Orientated. Either way. What did you say? I don't know. I'm orientated. Orientated. Or you just said orientated, which I think's fine. Okay. Well, at least we're. At least I can say words. You can say words. That's good. Yeah. Any control deck really does struggle against uh, against J Druid. And the fact that Duncan has been able to ramp up so quickly has been very difficult for Helen Eagles to deal with. True Silver has got a lot of value. And now what do you do here for Duncan? Do you use the Feral Rage to take down the Harrison Jones? Could we have them to do? Oh, I mean, the Jade Spirit there as well, yeah, yes. Of course you do. Unfortunately, this is just Jade generation on every single turn for Duncan. Literally been no dud turns for him and Helen Leroy. He's got options, right? You know, you have ways to deal with big Jade boards, but with this Auctioneer and the Jade Idols, you know, it's going to eventually outvalue Leroy. So you, Duncan may be forced to use an Earthen, Earthen Scales early, mm. uh, just to get the draw from the Auctioneer. Some have only been running one. But I... To be honest, in the in this matchup, you're not too worried about generating too much armor. It's more about just having that board presence. I mean, if Leroy can stop this from going out of control, if, the, if there's a dud draw from this auctioneer, then maybe there's a way back into this game. I think Leroy is now saying, I, 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 I've I got to try and go wide and then Sunkeeper Tower in potentially. Like, that's not a dud draw, but it's not a great draw. You might want to save that the next turn to guarantee two draws with your auctioneer. Or can you even can you even risk waiting that long? I think I'd save it, but this next draw might depend on what you want to do. Oh, okay, yeah, now you definitely save it. Does put this out of range of another true silver, by the way. God, that'll be that is a disgusting next turn for Duncan if this doesn't get dealt with. Regardless, it's a disgusting next turn for Duncan. And and Leroy doesn't really have many options, to be honest. He might actually just have to end up Valfin and Sunkeeper. I, I think he would have liked to have been able to. Hero, uh, hero power, Valkyrie, hero power, then save the next turn and then try and get Sunkeeper that following turn. So now he. To? Do you need to Sunkeeper? Um, Could you, is there an argument for Curator? Or? I think you need to Sunkeeper. This is too scary. You need to be able to deal with this next turn. As, as it stands, this could be up for two turns. But Duncan is going to get a oh, spicy, baby. spicy double auctioneer play here to refill his entire hand, and that is going to be really tilting for Leroy, you have to feel. Yeah, he's about to. Well, he can just draw his whole deck, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, he doesn't have to play the Auctioneer. He's valuing keeping that uh, Auctioneer. What's even worse is that he can now Fandral Jade Idol, and that's going to be uh. awful. Interesting decision from Duncan not to play both. I like it, though. It's, it's, it's a saved, very safe it, play. It saves one for the late game, Yep. which I think is very important. Nourish is huge. This is uh, this is a great game for Duncan right now. Does stop the card draw there though. Helen Leroy will deal with this, but now he's got to deal with that and Fandral and the six six. Yeah, Leroy can start to put taunts in the way. Try and match the value. Mm. Megasaur only trigger onto one. On one Murloc. But maybe that's good enough to get Poisonous to it deal with be. the... Yeah, I mean, or even plus three attack. Yeah. Could help out. You could do, oh, technically with uh, Wind Fury, you could deal six damage this turn. Nine damage I mean, you, if you can, of course, Hero Power first as well to get double value onto it. Mm. Or you could Curator just to draw your hand a little bit more, but I know this is a tough turn. You were qualitying again? Wow. Maybe you search for the three health here. Death mm. Rattle's not bad. Yeah, it might have to be the Death Rattle for Living Spores here. Poisonous is okay, but Death Rattle is not bad. Poisonous might come in handy, actually, um, next turn, but... A safer play seems to be Living Spores. Just got to hope there's no Wrath right now, but we can see that Duncan has ways of dealing with this if he draws Wrath from Nourish. Not Wrath. Swipe. Swipe, Swipe. Kingdom. Okay. 
Yeah, I was like, wait, wait there's Wrath right there. <laughs> Swipe cannon, that's what I meant. So Dun Duncan actually... I mean, actually, the Wrath might come in handy here because... You also have Primordial Drake, so... You can you can Wrath the Sunky Patarium, then clear off the Megasaur, and then play the Primordial Drake, and just leave two 1-1s on board that you're like, well, all right. Let's swipe as well. So now he actually has even more options. Oh, yeah, there's another option. Could just hero power, then swipe and keep a 6-1 on board, which makes it difficult for Helidero to deal with. Besides, the 4-8 taunt is better in the end. Keep that swipe potentially for burn damage, for face damage, to try and clear this game up. So we're going to see Curator come down, which will get another Gentle Megasaur, and a Primordial Drake, and a Murloc War Leader. Now, Helmiroi does have potential outs with getting a getaway Kodo and then just continuously regenerating a Tyrion, potentially. That could be something that he could use to win the game. Remember, what Curator does here is it does actually cycle through his deck to make Tyrion more likely to get drawn. And Tyrion's a big card here, both as is Ragnaros the Light Lord. Remember, Druid doesn't have many ways of spot dealing with big minions now. You've lost Mulch. There isn't really many spot removals for Druid at this point in time. No one runs Naturalize because it's not Mill Druid. Behemoth Swipe. Very comfortable play, just leaving the one Murloc on board. And Leroy's looking at a board that he has already equality twice. Mm -hmm. The Jades are now at 7-7. Seven, seven. You're struggling. I, I think you are. Control. Said, just a, a matchup that is really tif difficult to win. Control killer matchup for Duncan yeah. as well. He, he brought a control killer set of decks. Which is what Ting Ting did against. Duncan. Yeah. In the winner's bracket, Ting Ting just targeted those Discover decks, those Control decks, and uh, Duncan was punished by it, and clearly he's learned that lesson. He's just done exactly the same, same thing. He's just like, done the same thing. Hmm, that seems like a good plan. Uh, Leroy is running a more mid-range. It's not a super Control deck for Leroy, but it's it's a more mid-range variant. But I mean, Duncan has had fantastic starts, and he's had answers in every single in every single hand. But he's played it incredibly well as well. This is what we all talked about with Duncan. He just makes good decisions. Just He just makes good decisions all the time. You very rarely see Duncan misplay a turn. It was Ting Ting against Mysterious, not Ting Ting against Duncan. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I got confused there. That's okay, bud. It happens. But Duncan learning a lesson perhaps from watching Ting Ting do it to Mysterious then in the winner's bracket. Divine Shield's good here for Heli Leroy. Plays the Repentance off the back as well. Can Wrath for one, though. Get rid of one of these Divine Shields. Yeah, I don't even think you need to auction it first either because the behemoth just has too much value. Mm -hmm. Get an eight on, 8 on board with a 3-6 taunt. No equalities left. Feel good, feels good to go wide on the board. And you can generate a 9-9 nine nine as well. Yep, because he's already shuffled, hasn't he, because of the um, because of Fandral. Mm -hmm. You've seen both equalities, so you're more than happy to... And you just go wide. Put go big, go wide. Go big. Go big, go home. Go big or go home. He already is home. He, both of them, I think, I would assume are home. I hope so. I don't know why I hope so. I don't know what difference it would make if they're not home. I think this is pretty much GG. I don't know if Helen Leroy even has an answer. I don't even think Tyrion saves him at this point. Leroy's done so, as you can see. Now we watch the wild Leroy throw his chair about in anger. Not just a mating ritual. <laughs> it's a display of dominance for the wild <laughs> Helen Leroy. <laughs> this is certainly not a display of dominance right now. <laughs> if this is a display of dominance, it's coming from Duncan. Infuriated by the superior alpha male, <laughs> Helen Leroy displays his colorful feathers in a desperate hope to attempt the mating oh, Hearthstone like player. <laughs> Duncan, however, calm alpha male of the pack, has already displayed board dominance. And Heliroy just does not have the juice to deal with it. God, you have a nice voice. <laughs> I want you to read me bedtime stories. I'm going for the next David Attenborough. But I'm doing it about esports. Esports David think. Attenborough. That's a new thing. Perhaps that's when we make money. We could be rich. We could be rich. You've got the wonderful almost West Country but posh West Country accent. You Occasionally I drift into it when I say stuff like earth and scales. Earth and scales. <laughs> I, when I say thank you, I say it in Norfolk. I say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, damage control for Hello Leroy. We'll use the Elder Peacekeeper plus Stampeding Kodo to remove what he can of this board. And there's still a big old 7-7 left there. 
Mm, but not lethal for not Duncan. Lethal, no. Swipe would be lethal. So do you nourish? For innovate I mean, swipe. Yeah, okay. That works because you need a... Uh, well, there's the innovate. You need the hero power too, don't you? Well, that Feral works. Rage, that works too. Yeah, there we same go. Same difference. Game over. Duncan is going to be 2-0 up against Hello Leroy here. And now Hello Leroy needs to do the reverse sweep if he is even going to have any chance of making the finals. Otherwise, he's going to be finishing in the top eight. Can he do what his uh, fellow season one and two finalist member Mysterious did and make his way through the loser bracket? Or are we going to see him fall at this hurdle? Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned for another episode <laughs> of Hello Leroy Z. <laughs> He's he's angry, isn't he? he I, I never have never seen a series of Hearthstone Day where Nick has at not some point seemed angry. Yeah. And the, at least we don't have the, the contrast of emotions where usually he's like all upbeat and he's like showing signs and being like 10% skill, 10% lucky and stuff like that. And then he goes into full on, oh my God. power of will. Yeah. But he actually did that, didn't he? Did you not see that? No, I didn't see that. He did. He wrote. He had like little speech bubbles from Hearthstone. Ten percent luck, twenty percent skill. Yeah, he wrote that. Thirty percent concentrated power of draw. Yeah. <laughs> turn after turn, and then he lost the series. Damn. Or well, he lost the next game. I don't think he lost the series actually. But uh, if there is a matchup that Helen Leroy could win, could be this one. Yes, yeah, doable. It's got a lot of value. Those are quality consecrates are going to come in handy. Got a lot of healing. You can go wide with the hero power. Remember. He doesn't have that early start, though. No. Which can be so punishing. Like, he's running, of course, the, the more mid-game to late-game variant of the Murloc Paladin, so he doesn't have loads of Murlocs, but he does still have the Murloc package that can just spiral out of control. Mm. That's a nice draw. Valve and Inquisitor off the top. Yep. Perfectly acceptable first draw here for Hello Leroy. I'm not going to do it, don't worry. I'm not going to stray back into David Dutta Protector. He nearly went there, though. They I nearly went played. there. Good draw for Duncan as well, getting his quest off the top. He's also got a great curve. Two, three, four, five. It is a good curve as well, actually. But do you play the Armour Smith? I guess it can test the board. Yeah, it does. Yeah, he gets rid of some 1-1s. One I like playing Armour Smith yeah. against Paladin. I don't see why not. Your, your turns are awkward if you if you coin out the Tark Reaper. Tark Reaper also contests, though, remember. It does, but then you, you're probably just going to play Armorsmith behind it. Mm -hmm. Stonehill Defender, double true silver in hand too. What do we see Leroy pick up here? Oh, ah. it's my favorite card. What's it called? Wicker Flame Dingle Doo. <laughs> What's the one in the middle called? Booty Bay Bodyguard. Oh, damn it. I thought you were going to be inventive. Oh, well, I don't know, like Bristle Bumble Bingo Dude Dodge. Bottom Dude. Hmm. Uh, Bottom dude. Yeah. Well, Wicker Flame well, is. I know where, know where Wait, you're. Is, is Wicker Flame an easy choice here? Is there any? Uh, I don't know. Maybe consideration there's... for the stubborn gastropod. Yeah, maybe there is a, stub a consideration for the stubborn gastropod. It does get dealt with by fiery war axe, though, so you kind of have to expect that. You don't really have any buff in your deck, so Wicker Flame, Sparky Dude, Didge, doesn't. Mm. <laughs> I just. <laughs> I just I when never the gonna... meme gets so good. I know. I, I just unfortunately, it's Wicker Flame Burn Bristle, Kiernan, and you're going to say it correctly every single time because the name is right in front of you. Good job. There Proud you go. You. He does actually take the stubborn gastropod. Thankfully, because now you don't have to say his name again. I do. I, I quite like saying his name. I do as well. It's soothing. There's the star. The, the star creeper. <laughs> the star st creeper, creeping through the sky. I've just made a song. I made a new character. I made a comic book. Well, that was a roller coaster of emotions for me, Dan. And <laughs> it really was. And I, yeah, I don't really, really know how to respond, but I thank you for your time, and I've enjoyed every moment. Star Creeper, make you work hard. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's trying not to laugh because he's got a painful tummy. I really do. As we said, the curve for Duncan is just too good right now. It makes turns very simple for him. Could have been thinking about Fire War X if needed, but too much value from this 4-drop. Are you considering looking for Poisonous here? Then you can deal with the Armor Smith as well. I think it might be slightly overkill. Mm, maybe. You've already got Stubborn Gastropod to do it for you. Yeah. Could play Stonehill Defender and play another Murloc dude so that you get some more value out of Gentle Megasaur later on. I wonder... I think I like Defender. I mean, what are your alternatives? 
I like Defender. You could you could Gastropod and just dude up. Or you could play the Megasaur, look for poison. Not really getting too much value out of it. Although you are putting a 5-4 on the board and Let dealing with the 2-6. If you do get the uh, the fortunate. I mean, you could just deal with it anyway. Using your face, right? You could, but you trade your board in. Well, most of your board, you can trade one thing in first. Follow the rule. Okay, Aldor, okay. Aldoring instead, just to make sure you don't take too much damage. Also maintain your 1-3. Keep your board wide. Yep. Remember, you want to try and maintain the Murlocs as best as possible because you want to get the most value out of Gentle Megasaur. For sure. I think this might spell out to Duncan that Gentle Megasaur is a thing, by the way. So he might consider trying a Fiery War Axe or just play on curve with Ali Armorsmith. But Ali Armorsmith would potentially get punished by a Poisonous, which is maybe where Heavy Roy is looking to go with the Gentle Megasaur. Yeah, but he can get onto three Murlocs next turn. Mm -hmm. And knowing the amount of removal that is possible from the Warrior, this seems like a pretty and you can even actually rock pull first. Yeah. Rather than duding. Rock pull also means you nice and cleanly deal with the uh, armor smith. Oh, he's not even going to bother. Uh, he wants more value out of this uh, this Megasaur. Maybe even use it for a possible lethal turn a little bit later, perhaps. Yeah. Remember the, the one tool that the the one tool that the paladin has against. The warrior is that you can always go wide with your hero power. So you're always going to mean that Ragnaros has a chance, or the Ragnaros hero power has a chance of low value in impact. So there's always that benefit there for the for the paladin against your opponent. Now Stubborn Gastropod is down. Duncan has to consider using Fiery War X just to deal with it. And maybe this was Leroy's plan. It forces some removal of some sort. I think he was hoping to get a really good turn seven you know, taunt into with the Stubborn Gastropod. You saw a slight wince on his face, but it's not the end of the world. You've, you've forced a Fiery or War X charge to be used on something that is not exactly uh, insane value, so. I have seen these matchups go to fatigue. Yeah. Uh, where it just comes down to that 50-50 die insect shot. And as you said, the hero power can be so incredibly important. Hydrologist is great as well, because like we said, Getaway Kodo can provide oh, major yeah, value. Oh, for sure. Oh, Ooh. God. It, it was there again. It was there. It was there again. So I'm not even going to say it. But uh, curator comes down. But those aren't great. I would say in the long game, the the taunts that that Helleliro has picked up. He would have really been looking for things like another Sunkeeper Tarim. He would have been looking for another uh, Tyrion Ford Ring. Unfortunately, has picked up a stubborn gastropod and a curator. A curator is great card draw for days. But like you said, can sometimes come down to getting to fatigue, and you don't want to draw your entire deck when you're coming down to fatigue. Getaway Kodo, I would say, yeah. Yep, try and get some value out of Tyrion perhaps later. Now your question is, are you that bothered about this armor smith that you attack into it? Hmm. I guess by removing it, you're removing the chance of a brawl coming through and it surviving. But it might be slightly overkill. We've already seen one Gluttonous Ooze being included in Duncan's deck, so... It's also something that Hello Roy will be considering as a possibility, because sometimes when you tech it into one deck, you, you see it in all three, really. That's something, again, Ting Ting did against Mysterious. He had Gluttonous Ooze in every single deck. Curator seems good, but Battle Rage is potentially going to get used here. I was thinking Curator because you have an amazing follow-up play of um, the Primordial Drake, but look at this. Coin and Ravaging Ghoul deals with pretty much the entire board here. Excellent turn here for Duncan. Yeah, that's a really good turn. Really nice pickup from the Battle Rage. We'll also continue to generate that armor as well. How close is Duncan to finishing the quest as well? Leroy's board has been well and truly dealt with. He's at three out of seven, so he's not actually that far along here. Leroy's going to get a pretty solid Primordial Drake off the back. Has the Spike Ridge Steed, has the Getaway Kodo, has the Curator. There are now tools in Leroy's hand. And, and the Spike Ridge Steed and the Getaway Kodo, things that really help when it does get to this late game, when mm -hmm. the, the hero power, the Dynsec does come through. It's a great way of combating that. Spike Ridge Steed especially, because it's like, oh, okay, you killed women, but I've now got a 2-6 on the board that might be able to do damage to your face or allow me to contest the board that's currently present. 
There's another hydrologist as well, so we could search for another secret. At some point, Leroy needs to get value out of this Megasaur. And at some point, we'll see him draw Tyrion in a game. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe he's cut it. That would be the worst decision ever made. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. This allows you for a good, a good trade. And I suppose you're going to get a guaranteed good getaway Kodo with another Primordial Drake. No, not even going to play it. It does play into execute though. It plays into execute. You see, this is why I felt like it was an interesting decision because now you're guaranteed to get this executed, and it's a six ten. You kind of wanted to keep that on board. And you, you also that was already a pretty decent minion in its own right as a four eight. Often you like to buff up a slightly le lower value minion because the execute feels bad because you've used it on it like a 2 2 or something. So, execute will come through for Duncan. Yeah, Leroy really holding on to this weapon charge. He's been a bit stingy with it. He's been keeping it, holding it, saving it. At the moment, it's still just going to sit there. I feel like your casting has been a lot of song lyric esque. Keeping it, holding it, saving it. Touch it, bring it, babe. Well, like that kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep it, I hold it, save it, true silver. <laughs> Basically, I'm writing a new Daft Punk song. Other bands are available. Do I have to do it with that? I don't think you have to do that. Okay, great. Oh, it's brands, not bands. Silly me. Now he'll finally use the uh, the weapon charge. True silver to take down the dire horn hatch here, and he's got a little bit of a presence. And now this is the time where he's saying, right, I hope these Murlocs survive because I've got to. Uh, well. There's a whirlwind. But he's also got two primordial drakes in hand, so regardless, he had many ways of dealing with these murlocs. Yeah, it's just the whirlwind finishes off the uh, the steed as well. It does, yeah. Uh, you could also sleep with the fishes if you really want to. Doesn't really do much though that whirlwind wouldn't. No. So you could whirlwind first, then primordial drake. Is that overkill? I guess. I don't know. The I personally think clearing the. Clearing another minion off the board is it, it might be worth it, but the the whirlwind could come in handy he, a little bit later. Can he complete the quest if he plays Bloodhoof and Ali Armorsmith here? I think he can. I think he's at five out of seven. Or I could just be talking rubbish and he's four out of seven. It's fine. You are right. Are you worried about completing the quest? I I think main priority has to be get these Murlocs off the board. Because mm. Leroy has been waiting and he's not been. I mean, I suppose Duncan wouldn't know that the Megasaur sat in the hand, but he, he already saw it last her, last game, mm -hmm. so he knows it's a possibility. This sounds like an... I mean, at this point, Sunkeeper Tarim looks pretty juicy. But you don't want to overcommit to Sunkeeper Tarim, only because... It's a second getaway Kodo as well. Yeah. That's the value that he needs in this matchup. Well, I think at this point you're saying Tyrion, getaway Kodo, Tyrion, getaway Kodo. Yeah. Over and over again. This point now seems like a good sleep with the fishes turn with the uh, the primordial drake, or even just ravaging ghoul, sleep with the fishes, and you can ally armor smith to complete. No, you can't complete. Yeah, you can complete. So any to any taunt this turn plays completes. Something complete. Something something. My dark completed. side. <laughs> Come to the completed side. <laughs> we have taunts. Yep, just completes it with the Primordial Drake, as you said. He's got plenty of cleanup duty to do. He can do it either way. He's actually going to go for the Whirlwind rather than the Sleep with the Fishes. Effective use of his cards. And Leroy just looks exhausted. But mentally. He he, yeah, I mean, but he's, I mean, he desperately wants his Tyrion, right? I mean, that is what he's hoping for in this situation. Remember, he does have the benefit of... I mean, he could even play a getaway Kodo here. Now he's going to hero power. Remember, this is the benefit of the Paladin. You always have the ability to so generate something that will soak a Ragnaros hero power. But uh, right now, I think Duncan, Sulfurus, hero power, Ali Armorsmith, something like that. Very mana efficient turn. Good Ravaging Ghoul, if you'd like. Because then you know that you're not going to hit a, a dud. Well, that's just going straight to the noggin of Hello Leroy. How dud is a noggin at this point in time? No, I think that's uh, it's pretty good. Mm. There is Tyrion Fordring. But does, it, does he play at this turn? That's the question. Well, Duncan knows whether those secrets have been sat there, or at least one of them has been sat there. If you, if you, play, if you play Tyrion plus secret, then Duncan may be half tempted just to ravage and go, because then you're just going to get back mm. a little 1-1. Exactly. Unless 
Leroy trades. Well, Leroy could trade with Rockpool Hunter. Put your faith in he could just tr just trade in the one one if he wanted to, but no, he's going to choose not to play the getaway Kodo. Okay. He's going to choose to. He is trading it, but he's not playing the getaway Kodo because, well, he knows that something like a Ravaging Ghoul would just finish him off. Mm, it was an awkward turn to play a getaway Kodo. Also, Brawl could potentially spoil that. There was no way to guarantee you got getaway Kodo onto Tyrion there. No, because of course, Die Insect could have hit anything. Maybe, so. maybe the last now the getaway Kodo is going to be something along the lines of. I mean, the getaway Kodo might get value later on if if Duncan does run out of cards and this becomes a game of just 50-50 rag hits. Leroy plays a minion, it hits the minion. Leroy plays another minion, it hits the minion. Duncan's minion gets removed as well. Then those getaway Kodos will really get their value. Where's Ragnaros the Light Lord? Now, this is a better turn. It is. Because you can now... Trade in and you yeah. guarantee one of them back. And Dun you can see Duncan's face. He's kind of like, okay. Face is actually a good place for the Ragnaros to come down as well. Because you sort of kind of defend yourself. You don't really mind if Tyrion dies in this situation. And Duncan now is probably half tempted to just taunt up and not even hear a power because he might not want to give value to Hello Leroy's. Uh... Actually, no, you probably hear a power. I don't think turn, you can. Right? Re yeah, I don't think you can. Uh, you can I don't afford think... not to hear a power here. Yeah. I suppose taking eight damage to face if you don't hear a power is probably not a great shout. But then you are you don't really want to give him Tyrion back, right? I mean, this is a really difficult turn. He's just going to give him Tyrion back. But then next turn, Hilary Leroy could just Tyrion and get away Kodo again, and suddenly things are not looking half bad for him. This is where the value comes in with this particular Paladin deck. But he's still at a very low health, and we've not seen a lay of hands come out just yet. If this Ragnaros were to die from the Die Insect... It's still a little bit sticky of a situation. Mm -hmm. Ragnaros would be the better target. Because then you force Tyrion to potentially trade in. But Duncan says, okay, if I hear a power, then I can potentially deal with the whole board. Leroy wanting this to hit face. <sighs> Not quite. That's a shame. That could have potentially been a turnaround. Instead, he's just going to have to go down the line of play of keep playing Tyrions, which isn't a bad line of play, but it's also not a. You don't get a mega. You don't get mega value out of it though, do you? Because you haven't used he's it. He's probably just going to die again, and then you've used one of the charges. Yeah, I, there is the other option of now finally just trying to do something with that gentle mega sword that's been sitting in your hand, like Hero Power, Murloc War Leader, Gentle Mega Sword, trade into the one four. Maybe it might have to be what you go for. Try and go a little bit wide here. Mm. Certainly awkward turn for Hello Leroy now. I quite like, in this matchup where I think value is so important, potentially it's better to save as many true, or get as many true silver charges used as you can before it gets refreshed by more Tyrions. Ashbringer. Yeah. I don't know why I said. What did I say? True silver. Did I say true silver? Oh my goodness. Let's just get into that time. Okay. I feel like I've done that too much. I'm sorry. Yeah, buddy. Do you know what, buddy? I love you either way. It's okay. Hold me. I always do. So I hope you, if, if I say something that's wrong, I want you to correct me as well. All right? I don't even notice. That's the worst, <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst thing. <laughs> none, of these are look, none of these are great, but Bluetooth Brave is all right. So he'll take that. I guess you hope to hit Tyrion at this point in time. It's a, it's a one in three shot. Gonna go for it. Die Insect will hit Tyrion. The worst of the lot. Not the situation that Helen wanted to be in because get a, Getaway Kodo now, not gonna have that value. Leroy is now at the stage of acceptance, by the way. Yeah, grief has gone Starts, many stages. Yeah, it's gone. Despair was there, depression, but now it's just acceptance on the road back to recovery. As his chances of finals are slowly slipping away. Still not out of it yet. Can go wide here. Hero Power, Valfin, Hero Power, Rockpool. Or Murloc, Wally. No, that's too many. Too many banners. I 
do feel like he might have to do something with his Megasaur. It's been sat there. It's been there a He's while. He's had chances to get some what value out of it, but so it was never enough for him in his eyes. You can dude, Valfin dude, Murloc Warley to Megasaur. Hope that there's no brawl. Thank so you, mate. Yeah, I, uh, I think I'm all right with that. Wonder. What are you looking for, for from the, the Megasaur, though? I mean, divine shields. Divine shields plus three attacks not going to help because you're worried about uh, more whirlwind effects. effects. You've seen two primordial drakes. You've seen two ravaging ghouls. Yeah, and you've seen whirlwind. one whirlwind. Okay, well. So suddenly, there's only basically one whirlwind with sleep with the fishes left. So I don't mind just slamming stuff down. Spike Ridge D's coming down though. Oh, if that soaks the Ragnaros hero power, we'll generate a 2-6. Yeah, it's one of the better cards for for soaking a hero power for sure, but there is the option of just slam execute if, uh, if Duncan likes. It doesn't feel great to... I mean, you've seen every threat, really, haven't you, from the from the, the Paladin deck. They're not, probably not running anything, anything more than this. Unless he's running an Inzoth. Remember, people have been running Inzoth with just Tyrion, basically. I've, not even, I've seen people not even include Cairn. With Ninzoth. They kind of just slam it in to say another Tyrion generator. I mean, with, with Stonehill Defender in deck that can quite often get you another mm. Tyrion, yeah, it's a possibility. I don't think it will no. be the case, but. Especially with the Gentle Megasaur, that makes me feel like it's not quite that yeah. late game focused. Still, Tyrion is. is it, sorry, uh, Leroy, Leroy's not totally out of this right now. It definitely doesn't look good for him. Gonna slam and deal with this, I think. Another slam. That means he doesn't even. That means he can clear the entire board with his uh, fiery war axe if he wants to. Yep. Doesn't even have to use the execute. Has a brawl as well to work with. I think this might be it. It wouldn't quite be one-one between us on predictions, but it would certainly have your second predictor out. Almost close. How many weapons have we seen? We've seen at least... I think we've seen all the weapons, right? At this point in time. From Duncan? Both Fire Oryxes? Yeah. I believe so. And also, obviously, Sulfurus is gone. And now we see a Brawl in Duncan's hand. That's the first Brawl we've seen of the game. So Helen Leroy hasn't seen a Brawl. He has to be concerned for a Brawl. Can clear the entire board, though. Depends how wide he wants to go in this situation. Doesn't look like he's going to overcommit. He's just going to use the Harrison. Still saving that gentle Megasaur, by the way. Well, this is the situation for Duncan. Is He's slowly running out of actual things to play. Yeah. So, yes, he could brawl now, follow it up with a Bloodhoof, but then he can't die Error insect. Power. And if you're not weaving in those die insects, it doesn't feel great. You don't feel like you get anything. So he may be tempted just to Bloodhoof Brave and die insect here and then just pass. Yeah. I and then Helu Leroy can just slowly use his hero power to generate somewhat of a board. That's when the Megasaur and the War Leaders may come in handy. Mm -hmm. If you can bait the Brawl out here, you're going to feel slightly better about committing a bit more. But again, you've not seen two Brawls, so you can't overcommit. Diane comes out oh straight my. to face. But there is healing for Helu Leroy, remember. There, there is, is healing. There is a lay of hands. But now, Duncan has got the option of Brawl and hero power. Yeah, that's not any healing. No, that's not healing. So Duncan essentially has a 50-50 win chance next turn. He might even have a more than 50-50 win chance with if the execute brings a damage minion down. Leroy is going at it now. He's dropping everything, dropping all the Murlocs. And that is a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage. Not enough to win, though. Oh, no. But... It does take him down to 10 HP, and now Duncan can go for the 50-50. This is a brawl 50-50 right now, ladies and gentlemen. It might not be a 50-50 if the 8-1 survives as well. This is a very, very tough turn. Will Duncan be going into the next round? Yes, he will. Hello, Leroy falls in loser's bracket round one. Duncan moves on to face off against Ting Ting, and they will be competing to see who goes to the live finals and join the other three competitors. You, ah. could, you could draw it up here. You could draw the predictions up. If Duncan moves on and beats Ting Ting, you could draw this up. 
So we won't actually no casters would no casters would lose either. We no. all we all end up one one. But I, I feel for Helen Leroy. I really do because it, it's obvious that he really lets his emotions come into his play. I don't know if there were any turns that he could have played differently. I think it was difficult to assess that from our point of view. I mean, there are turns he could have played differently, but yeah. it's whether it's they were optimal or not. Or whether they would even made sense. What I think Duncan has done again has brought a lineup that has been very good against what his opponent has brought to the table. It was a lineup that was designed to win the later the games went. In 